favorite tourist attractions is Man's Chinese Theater. Some of us remember it as Grillman's Chinese Theater. Well, whatever you call it. Hollywood history is alive and it's surrounding uh, the cement footsteps. And our Judd Rose is there live. And I want to know, Judd, are you looking for the Frank Gifford screen test from Warner's? Is that what you're doing there? Actually, I'm looking for your signature in cement, Kathleen. You know, back in the 30s and 40s, uh, that was the golden era of Hollywood when they say movies were movies and movie theaters were movie theaters. I don't mean those pill boxes with multi-screens and suburban shopping malls that we go to now. I'm talking about real movie palaces, places that were often more elaborate or, and ornate than the films that they were showing. And at that time, there was no theater that was more elaborate and more famous than this one, Hollywood's Chinese Theater. And we're speaking to you from the forecourt of Drummond's Chinese Theater here in Hollywood, California. Raman's Chinese wasn't just a movie theater, it was itself a movie star in films like this one, The Day of the Locust. It was the grand hotel of movie theaters, and in Hollywood it was the premier spot for premieres, starting in 1927 with Cecil B. DeMille's King of Kings. It was also in 1927 that a happy accident turned into a Tinseltown tradition. Movie queen Norma Talmadge accidentally stepped into wet cement, and showman Sid Grauman was inspired. Since then, more than 150 screen legends have followed in her footsteps. The ceremonies surrounding the placing of hands and feet in cement are as much an event here as the Oscars. Recent years have seen the pavement pantheon grow to include Burt Reynolds, super directors George Lucas and Steven Spielberg, and a true film legend, Donald Duck. Among the other signatures of the Chinese theater are an Olympian, Sonia Henney, who was an Olympic ice skating champion and a movie star in her own right, and Esther Williams, the movie swimming star, who is an ABC commentator during the summer games. Another fixture at the Chinese theater for just about every movie premiere we've ever seen is Army Archard, who is also the columnist for Daily Variety. Army, tell me about some of the premieres that stand out in your mind here at the Chinese. Well, of course, I think everyone uh, would want to remember the, uh, the most recent one, which was... Uh, Purple Rain, in which Prince made his uh, film debut. Of course, the the, uh, the Chinese Ted Man's Chinese Theater has been the scene for so many stars having their first big movie. You know, like Sylvester Stallone and John Travolta, and of course uh, there have been some there were some strange premieres. King here. Kong, you mentioned. I did King Kong here, and uh, <laughs> among the stars who was here was King Kong. And they had you dress in a toga once. That was for a funny thing happened on the way to the forum and the. Uh, all the guests, not all the guests, of course, there aren't that many <laughs> chariots around Hollywood these days, but a lot of us did arrive in chariots with some very uh, uh, <clears throat> appropriately dressed young ladies. There was, there was a lot of showmanship in those days. Well, you talk about those days. Is it still a status symbol to have a premiere at the Chinese theater, or has it changed? Is this passe? Oh, no, this is not passe, as proven exactly by the fact that when Purple Rain with Prince opened, this was the place they chose to have the premiere. And I think it, uh, it will be here as well as long as we will be around, that's for sure. It's, you know, it's fun. As you say, it's ornate. The grand old movie palaces of the, of the 20s and 30s are not around anymore. Very few of them now. A few are being, you know, revived. And the Chinese still remains a beautiful theater in which to, to watch a movie. Thank you very much, Army Archer. And we should say, despite the ornate front, it's a false front. If you go behind the theater, you'll see it's really just a big square box. But the front, well, that's basically a mirage for the tourists. And somehow in Hollywood, that seems kind of fitting. Kathleen, back to you. <laughs> Judd, thank you. And coming up next, Virgil Hill's bout at the L.A. Sports Arena against a young Yugoslavian boxer. Stay with us. On One Life to Live, Bo's love for Didi was just beginning.